Well, welcome to the second Create Conference podcast, where we're promoting our webinar happening on the 4th of February, 2022. How could business have got it so right and so wrong? The positive and negative effects of financing in the majority world. With me today, I've got Timo Plachinski, uh, Roy, uh, Ruben uh, Coulter and Roy Soto. Uh, it's great to have you with us uh, and uh, thank you for the support of the webinar and also the conference. Um, Timo, could you introduce yourself to us, please? Yes, of course. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I'm living in Hamburg, Germany, and uh, I'm working for the World Evangelical Alliance, a global network of various denominations and churches. And I'm leading the Business Coalition, which is the connection point for all issues around business, finance, and economy when it comes to ethical questions. To that, uh, we are running conferences, launching publications, and beyond, I'm uh, pastoring a Baptist church, and I'm involved in uh, M&A business, uh, dealing with company transactions. That's me. Excellent. Thanks, TV. Uh, Ruben, could you uh, tell us a little bit about yourself? Yeah, great to be with you. I'm based in Bristol, England. Um, I am the international director for Faith Driven Entrepreneur and Faith Driven Investor. And our mission is to inspire and equip Christian entrepreneurs and investors around the world to live out their faith. Um, my background is as a public health specialist and a policy expert um, working in Africa over the past 20 years. Um, I spent time at the World Economic Forum as the director there and leading an impact investment network called Transformational Business Network. So this is an issue very close to my heart and really excited to just discuss and say, how do we do things better? How do we uh, harness the power of business for good, but with the community, by the community, for the community? Mm, thanks, Ruby. <laughs> and Roy, could you share a little bit about who you are in your context, please? It's so good to be with all of you. I am from the other side of the ocean, in Central America, in Costa Rica, and I am a, I'm a pastor at a local church in the rural area of Fraijan, is the name of the town. And we were, I'm spending all my the last 25 years leading this church and leading some other networks around Latin America and some other areas in the world, trying to create connections and communities of faith that they can integrate some other, some different kind of voices in the ways to be solid light in their own communities, using many different kinds of tools. And then um, I'm also a consultant for organizations, and and it's a, it's a, a, amazing to be part of this conversation. And because we believe that uh, we can we can create a new kind of communities if we have we paid attention to other voices and some other kind of spiritualities even when this spiritual is coming from a totally different background than the church uh, picture. So thank you. Uh, thanks, Roy. And I'm Andre Van Emmeren from Melbourne, Australia. I'm the Managing Director at the Centre for Building Better Community, uh, as well as one of the coordinators of the Informal Settlements and Cities Consortium. Um, and uh, we've joined forces with Timo and the WEA Business Coalition uh, to put this conference together, the CREATE conference. And we wanted to uh, introduce you to the type of conversations that we're going to be having at the conference. That's why we're running a series of four webinars. And uh, this particular podcast is uh, giving you a bit of a flavour of what's going to happen at our second webinar happening on the 4th of February. Uh, so I'm really keen to, uh, to hear from uh, you today, Roy and Ruben and, and Timo, where have you seen the positive or negative effects of business, particularly in the global south? Maybe I can jump in. Um, sure. One of the things I've seen, so I, I've lived in uh, East Africa uh, for the past four years, and one of the things that we found was investment is pouring into East Africa. It's uh, known as the Silicon Savannah. Um, but the investment capital, by and large, is going to expat founders. It's going to uh, Stanford and Harvard educated MBAs um, who are coming to Africa to live and work there and build technology companies. And over 90% of that venture capital is going to these founders because they look like the investors. 
Um, investors are more comfortable investing in people who've been to the same universities, have the same background. The problem is that those expats, those highly educated Americans, they haven't grown up in these communities. They superficially understand some of the problems that they're trying to solve and indeed often have some great technologies, but don't understand the social, uh, cultural paradigms in which they're entering. And so often we see that it doesn't lead to long-term transformation and change on the issues that they care about. Um, and, and sadly, often when there are setbacks, when there are hurdles, um, these businesses exit and uh, these businesses end up collapsing. And um, so I guess that's some of the negative that we've seen. On the flip side, we have seen incredible local entrepreneurs raised up in informal settlements um, who have incredible talent and ability, but lack opportunity. And we've seen some great examples. There's a brilliant uh, community in Cape Town called R Labs, which has created those pathways, essentially a springboard for young entrepreneurs in these communities to grow businesses which are leading to incredible transformation in their lives and communities. So I've seen both the good, the bad, and the ugly. Yeah, thanks, Ruben. Roy, I'd be really interested to hear from you. What have you seen in uh, your work around Latin America, the, the positives and the negatives around the effect of business? Uh, that's a great question. And of course, as you said, uh, Andre, my point of view is coming from Latin America. And most of you know about all the history it's behind in our, in our journey as a Latinos here. And I think the negatives coming from this economical uh, industry is that they came over our country, our countries, and they want to set up their companies and their business in a big disconnection with the local community. So they saw our arena as a field of prosperity for their own business, but with any kind of minimum interaction with their own community. Even when they have agreements with the government and the government allow them to come over, but they set up their business, again, without any kind of conversation and dialogues with the community. And the second one, I, 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 I can see this right now here, for example, in the way that our neighbors, and I'm talking not just in the rural areas. I'm talking about mm -hmm. general. In the way that they see or they saw the investors is like, a, a, let me use the word, like a, the boss, like, the, you know, the, oh, this is the man with the money. Uh, so they uh -huh. came with the money here, set up the business. So in some ways, this kind of point of view from the psychology perspective, help or not help the neighbors in the way, if they can see the other person with the money as the boss, as the king, as the, the person with money, who is going to be the obedient, who is going to be, let me use the bad word, who is going to be the slaves. The way is a bad word I know in different kinds of contexts, but this is what I can see right now here. And the third is this kind of business is not creating the ways to help the own, the own community to respond to their own communities, to their own needs. They came, home, they came over here, they set up whatever the community needs, and this create a dependency, a dependency. And that mm -hmm. dependency mm -hmm. means in the labor, in the work that they provide, in the, you know, in the position the company has, but in the times when this company move on to another direction, that community, and I can give you many examples, that community come back to the words, word state, than the words before that came, the company coming down. And, mm. and, and, the, and another negative, I think is that most of these companies, they set up their business in our context and all the specialists uh, labor, like a professionals and the skills people, they imported those uh, persons to work in the company. So they brought people from different countries or different places. And, and they don't create uh, the kind of uh, environment or ecosystem to help the, the community of bases, right? To learn how to be 
skill, how they, how they can be a professional and the way they can take care of the, some of the position and their own business. So in my perspective, this is something that, that is very negative right now uh, mm. that I can see right now in Costa Rica. In Costa Rica, in Latin America, for example, every time we, the government opened the gates, the doors for these huge companies, again, again, they mm. set up the business without any kind of conversation with the gap, with the community. And also they don't have some of those, some of them, they don't have a lot of respect for the ecosystem around right. the communities. Yeah, thank you, Roy. Yeah, that's really helpful. Timo, what, what would you like to add to the conversation? Uh, I look very much forward to, to the webinar on the 4th February to dig deeper into that. And uh, I, of course, have also some experiences, a good one from South Africa, and uh, a bad one of Western money in Zambia. So uh, there is much, uh, much stuff and examples uh, for our webinar. And uh, yeah, so uh, let's, let's run it soon. Fantastic. Absolutely. I just want to ask another question. Um, just very briefly, because we're going to explore more of this in the webinar itself. But how can we increase the, the positive effects of outside investment? You know, I mean, whether that's money, time, resources. And the flip side of that, of course, is how can we minimize the negative effects? Yeah, I think uh, Roy was mentioning the dependency, and that is a mm. crucial uh, aspect. So uh, whenever we can minimize the dependency, uh, then we can uh, help sustainably. Uh, as long as it is just um, Western money, which, uh, let's say, keep the ball rolling in, in other countries, then it's difficult. Uh, so we have to, uh, uh, to support uh, in order to help to develop a, a sustainable business which is able to survive on its own. Any thoughts, Ruben or Roy? Well, I, I, in my case, I, I want to come back to, again, what Timo said about the dependency. And, and, and again, I, I, one of my dreams and the conversation that we have with some of the, the, the key leaders of the huge company here is, please, please stop a little bit, get some baby steps and start the conversation with the a community and pay attention to what mm. their, their own expectations. And if they create this kind of synergy, the people in our people in Latin America can create something that I, I call ownership and they can feel part of whatever is gonna happen if this company has to leave someday. Mm. I know mm. for sure if they create a kind of culture of ownership, the business can go, can leave, but they can keep the company and they can mm. keep I'm in the business. So, uh, yeah. yeah, this is some of my thoughts. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, thanks, Roy. Ruben, what are you thinking? How can we, you know, maximize the positive effect and perhaps minimize some of the negative effects of, of business in this uh, sort of majority world context that we're talking about? Yeah, so I think we need to flip the power dynamics. And there's a saying that talent is evenly distributed, but opportunity is not. And so I know there are incredibly talented men and women growing up in disadvantaged communities. And we need to create those opportunity pathways for them to utilize their skills because they will be the leaders of tomorrow and they will understand, they have lived experience of the problems that they face. They know the solutions that are needed. And if we're able to get behind them and empower them and bridge some of that gaps and, and help them get access to expertise and capital, and they will create amazing solutions. Um, and I think that's really what's, what's needed in all of this is, is we begin with the communities where we're working with. We don't begin with the capital. And, and that's exactly the kind of conversation that both uh, you, Ruben, and Roy are outlining that we want to have in this upcoming webinar, as well as the conference in Poland. Uh, so the, uh, the CREATE conference is happening in Poland on the 21st to the 24th of June. Uh, the details are on the website, www.create-conference.net. So if you're enjoying this conversation, please register for the webinar and consider coming to join us in Poland. Uh, it's right before the World Urban Forum, so we'd encourage you to, uh, to stick around and be part of those broader global conversations 
uh, as well. But uh, at the CREATE conference, our time together will be a bit different to a normal conference. We're calling this a working conference, where business and community come together to work on new ways forward towards the creation of communities where everyone uh, can flourish, exactly what Roy and Ruben are, are talking about. So you'll get to explore the topics that matter to you, and we're going to run a process called Open Space, uh, where we bring the networking connections that happen into the breaks, into the heart of the conference, uh, and we'll introduce you to a method of conversation that allows you to explore holistically all the elements of a particular issue. So if this sounds like something that you're interested in, uh, please consider joining us in Poland on the 21st to the 24th of June. The details are on the website. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you online uh, on the 4th of February uh, for, the, uh, for the webinar, How Could Business Have Got It So Right and So Wrong? The Positive and Negative Effects of Financing in the Majority World. So Timo, Ruben and Roy, thank you so much for joining us and we look forward to seeing you uh, at the webinar.